Right now, several people are being charged in multiple deaths at the Waupun Correctional Institution, including the warden. We are live in Dodge County with the latest. Also an update on a Beltline crash that caused major backups yesterday, what police say they found in the car. And later, we head back to University Ridge Golf Course to see how volunteers there are getting ready for the AmFam Championship. It's all next on News 3 Now at 6. These people were not cared for. And they are people. They were not cared for at Wapong Correctional. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. We begin with our continuing coverage from Dodge County, where the warden of the Wapong Correctional Institution and several others are now being charged in the deaths of inmates at the prison. News 3 Now has team coverage on those being charged and reaction from lawmakers. First, let's start with Braden Ross, who is live in Wapong with more on what led to these charges. Braden. Hi, Eric. Yeah, nine people charged today in this, including the warden himself. Now, we actually got the criminal complaints for this case, and I want to read part of this verbatim for you right now. That This is from an interview the Dodge County Sheriff Dale Schmidt did with the warden. Now, Schmidt asked why the warden's staff wasn't trained enough to avoid these deaths. The warden's response, quote, from tragedy can come improvement, adding that he didn't know the dead, but he, quote, hates the fact that they're no longer alive. Now, that warden, Randall Hepp, was charged this morning with abuse of residents in penal facilities and misconduct in office. That's related to the death of 24-year-old Cameron Williams, who had a stroke and died in his cell last October. The sheriff telling us today his death came after repeated medical incidents that were ignored by staff. He also says the accused correction staff consistently failed to check on inmates. He was dead in his cell for over 12 hours until they located him the next morning. There must be accountability for the actions and inactions of state employees. As the sheriff, I am angered at how these men were treated and how they died. Now, in February of this year, 62-year-old Donald Meyer was found dead in his cell. His death was ruled a homicide due to malnutrition and dehydration. The sheriff says that's a direct consequence of neglect by Wapon Correctional staff. Now, three former staff members were charged in connection with that death. We know of all nine of them, all nine are released today on signature bond. That includes the warden himself. Now, we have a full breakdown of everything, including these criminal complaints, right now on channel3000.com. You can find all the information you need and everything we know. We'll, of course, keep you updated as we learn more. This this is very much a developing situation here. But for now, reporting live in Wapon, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. All right, Braden, thank you. The Wisconsin Department of Corrections releasing a statement about today's events saying, in part, quote, maintaining the safety of people in our care and staff as well as local communities continues to be the DOC's top priority. Ensuring accountability for every individual who fails to uphold the DOC's high standards of conduct is a critical part of safety and security both within our institutions and beyond them. News from Wapan generated strong reaction from lawmakers asking the question, where do we go from here? Political reporter Will Keneally spoke with some of them and joins us now with more. Will? Well, Governor Evers last year asked federal investigators to look into the Wapan prison. After the arrest today, he asked the agency to continue that investigation. Now, Evers said in a statement that people under DOC care should remain safe, adding that the criminal justice system must hold every wrongdoer to account. Now, across the aisle, Racine Senator Van Wangard told us that he appreciates Dodge County Sheriff's Dale Schmidt's action to hold a pond's warden and personnel accountable. We also spoke with the co-chair of the state's powerful budget writing committee about what oversight from, from the legislature may be considering. But I think we'll try to model something similar to what um, the sheriff mentioned in his press conference as well about uh, county jails have a department within DOC that, that inspects them regularly. Now, he added that this may look a little different. It may need oversight outside the DOC umbrella. Now, lawmakers are generally done for the summer right now, so we could see this come back at some point next year. All right, Will, thank you for the latest up-to-date information on this story and others. Don't forget to download the Channel 3000 News app. With it, you'll get the latest stories, alerts, and breaking news as it happens. Just search WISC in your app store. We are learning the identities of the two people killed in a home explosion last week. Rudolph and Ursula Niederhauser were pronounced dead at the scene a day after the explosion. It happened on May 28th in the 4900 block of Capitol View Road in the town of Springfield. The cause and manner of death are still pending. More testing 
is being done. Another possibility of rain later tonight. Let's check your first warned forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Eric, yeah, we're monitoring for those showers to develop across southern Wisconsin. Even out here on the patio, I could see just a couple of clouds out here. But let's go to our Queen Bee radio sky cam looking west towards Platteville. Actually, I say northwest from Platteville over towards the Mississippi River. You can see those clouds getting a little bit darker, a little bit higher, deeper into the sky. We do have a couple of showers and isolated thunderstorms that are popping up very close to that Prairie du Chien area just west of Mount Hope. And our future track model is going to bring some of those showers showers and thunderstorms into southern Wisconsin as we have a little wave of energy sweeping around behind the weather system that we saw over the past couple days, a couple severe thunderstorm warnings over northern Wisconsin. I point those out because it's that energy that our future track models sweeping through southern Wisconsin tonight. We'll see if this materializes. We're here with uh, meteorologist Blaze Keller this evening as well. It's dry out here. It is warm. We got the fuel with the temperature, but not so much with the humidity and some of the other factors that we'd be looking looking at across the area, even though it's warm, the some of the other factors for robust severe weather or robust thunderstorm activity just doesn't seem quite likely at this point. But we'll keep monitoring it until that shower and storm activity happens. We got 80 across Dane County. It's gorgeous out there. And this evening, that isolated shower and storm chance as we move towards 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. We'll be tracking the storms this evening. At 10 o'clock, we'll be showing likely the very end of those showers and storms. And then we'll be discussing how nice the weather's going to be over the next 10 days in Maine weather. All right, Alex, thank you. Now to an update on that crash on the Beltline yesterday that caused significant backups. Authorities say they found a gun and magazines in the car that crashed at around 2.20 yesterday. Police tried to stop the vehicle as it sped through the closed flex lane near John Nolan Drive. Police say they did not pursue the vehicle before the crash. The driver, a 34-year-old man, was taken to a hospital. Charges are pending in the incident. A woman is dead after a crash this morning in the town of Rutland, just south of Oregon. Deputies and EMS were sent to the scene at Highway 14 at Old Stage Road. Witnesses say an SUV was driving west on Old Stage when the driver pulled out in front of a semi traveling north on Highway 14. The SUV driver was pronounced dead at the scene. The semi driver was not hurt. A 19 year old man is taken into custody after a pursuit with the state patrol in DeForest. The man was allegedly going 93 in a 70 zone. During the pursuit, the vehicle drove off the roadway near an exit ramp on US 151. The driver was booked into the Dane County Jail. Two passengers in that vehicle were also cited for underage alcohol violations. In Milwaukee today, a man accused of murdering and dismembering a woman is being denied access to a laptop while in jail. Maxwell Anderson is facing homicide, dismemberment, and arson charges for allegedly killing and spreading Sade Robinson's remains around the Milwaukee area in April. Anderson is being held on a $5 million bond. His attorney wanted him to be able to review the evidence while he's in custody, but the judge said other inmates would learn about this and create major complications. Meanwhile, Sade Robinson's family has filed a wrongful death civil suit against Anderson. If successful, a jury would decide how much money the family would get in damages. In Wisconsin, wrongful death payouts are capped at $350,000 for adults. Now to continuing coverage of the AmFam Championship. We're now less than two days away from the pros teeing off. Today, our Kyle Pazorski brings us a look at the volunteers who make it all possible. Since its inception in 2016, countless volunteers have come here to University Ridge to make this event all possible year in and year out. Wednesday, I met up with two of those volunteers, Rick Webster and Gail Perla. The two have volunteered at the tournament since its creation in 2016. One of the great things about the volunteers out here is they're willing to pitch in for whatever they needs to be done. Uh, We're really fortunate here that there isn't a max minimum that you have to volunteer. We take you for one day if you want to come out. We can find something for you to do. The two say their favorite part is the charitable component, helping American family give back to the local communities. Over the past eight years, the Steve Stricker American Family Insurance Foundation has raised over $17 million for charity. Reporting from University Ridge, Kyle Psorski, News 3 Now. Kyle, thanks. And along with the money raised for charity, the foundation has distributed more than 800 grants to organizations supporting families and healthy kids. Well, still ahead on News 3 Now at 6, the numbers are in. How this year's Broadfest did despite all that severe weather. Plus, a new business in Middleton looks to bring video games to those who may not be able to play them. We'll be right back. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. I'm attorney David Gruber. If you've been seriously injured, trust our hometown team to get you back in the game. Gruber Law Offices, 
proud partner of your Milwaukee Brewers. One call, that's all. How would you like to replace that old, outdated bathtub with a luxurious, easy-access walk-in shower? It's easy when you call Mad City Baths. Mad City is Wisconsin's trusted bathroom remodeler with installations in as little as one day. We're also your local provider for replacement windows and kitchen cabinet refacing. Call now during Big Deal Days and save $1,000 on a new bath or shower. Now that's a big deal. Zero down and zero interest till 2026. Senior military discounts plus a bonus. Receive $750 in safety upgrades with your bath or shower purchase. And call during this program for the free $50 Walmart gift card with your in-home estimate from Mad City. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, Call 608-729-4466. That's 608-729-4466. Southbury Healthcare is here to help. To help with your shoulder pain. Your knee injury. That hip that bothers you. With your foot or ankle pain. We focus on quality. We focus on results. And take time to listen. So that your care is the best care. For you. 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 For you. We're here for you. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics. Listening, healing, caring. It's in our nature. 40 years ago, a monster tornado flattened the town of Barneville. We've heard the survivor stories. Now I'm showing you why it happened. We'll break down the science behind the storm and how it helps us prepare for severe weather today, Thursday at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. For the first time ever, the city of Middleton will hold a community-led LGBTQ plus pride event. Middleton Pride will take place this Saturday at Stonehorse Green from noon to 4 p.m. The event aims to celebrate the diverse identities of the LGBTQ plus community and will feature live performances by an LGBTQ plus chorus, drag queens, a DJ, and more. Activities such as face painting and button making will also take place. Nearby restaurants will feature pride specials that guests can purchase. The event itself is free to attend. In more local news, a group in Madison is bringing video games to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to play. The Adaptive Gaming Expo in Middleton is a part of Access to Independence, a nonprofit organization that helps people with disabilities in South Central Wisconsin. The Expo showcased different ways to play video games that cater to people who can't use a normal video game controller. So somebody may have a hard time holding a traditional controller, so they might want to have a device mounted on a wheelchair, they may need specialized joysticks, they might need a different type of button rather than a small button on a, con on a joystick or controller. They might want a larger button that's easier to hit. So the expo featured demonstrations of the different controllers as well as vendors who would sell them to people interested in using them. Broadfest organizers are celebrating another successful year despite all that bad weather. According to organizers, more than $90,000 was raised to support local charities. Some of those include Boys and Girls Club of Dane County and Special Olympics. Since starting back in 1983, Broadfest has raised nearly $3 million for nonprofits. After the break, how a Wisconsin couple is looking to raise awareness for kidney health and donation. Plus, as the school year comes to an end, some elementary school students get a visit from a special guest. And have we seen the last of the rain this week? Alex will have the answer, his complete forecast, when we come back. For a safe, accessible bath or shower that's also modern and stylish, call Mad City Baths for expert installation in as little as one day. Call now during Big Deal Days and save $1,000 on a new bath or shower. Zero down and zero interest until 2026. Plus a bonus. Receive $750 in safety upgrades with your bath or shower purchase. And call now for a free $50 Walmart gift card with estimate. We're looking for 200 homeowners this month interested in getting new landscape borders. Our cutting edge materials and installation process ensures that your borders will not fade, discolor, or disconnect and will look beautiful for years to come. All covered by our extensive lifetime warranty. Visit the website or call the number for your new borders today. Tina, the Tina Turner Musical. 
see her triumphant story and prepare to be ecstatically blown away direct from Broadway. Playing June 11th through 16th at Overture Center. Tickets at Overture.org. How much was I paying a month for insulin? $185. $300. $400. I never expected anyone to do something about it. But then Tammy Baldwin did. She stood up to the drug companies and wrote a law capping the cost of insulin. Thanks to Tammy, now it just costs $35 a month. She made a huge difference for so many of us. She lifted a weight off all our shoulders. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. CDS Fiber Internet makes our home smarter. Working, playing, living, learning. It's all better with TDS Fiber Internet because it's faster, more reliable. It's award-winning internet served up by friendly local folks. It's what keeps us connected. And isn't that what it's all about? Say hello to internet that hits different. Say hello to TDS. Get an 11% rebate on your entire roofing project at Menards. Owens Corning Shingles have a limited lifetime warranty and up to 130 mile per hour wind warranty. Finish your project with aluminum soffit. It's low maintenance, keeps your attic cool, and is easy to install. These pre-finished panels are stocked in white, brown, and black. Ready to take home today. Get an 11% rebate on your entire roofing project today. Save big money at Menards. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. A Madison Elementary School is sending its students off to summer break with a special surprise. News 3 Now's Merrill Hubbard is here to share this heartwarming story. Merrill? Eric, this is the last video classes for students at Franklin Elementary. As they start summer break, they'll take with them lessons about kindness they've learned all school year. Lessons they won't soon forget, thanks to a surprise visit from there to their classroom. Uh, okay, so we just did On Monday morning, one second grade class turned around to see someone they've idolized all year. I was like, oh, is this really hacker? This class has been learning about acts of kindness from a CBS Mornings segment called Kindness 101. Two of the students took these lessons outside the classroom when they helped a worm. You carried it to there, and then the sand, it was really dried out, covered in sand, and I'm glad that that we found it. Do you want to show me where you carried it? Yes. From sand to soil, students provided the worm with a much better home. It probably had found its family now. Not everyone gets recognized for their acts of kindness, but this time word about the worm traveled far. Here we go. Reporter Steve Hartman, CBS News icon and the creator of Kindness 101, oh. surprised oh, the class. <laughs> How are you guys? They did not recognize me right away. <laughs> and I think they were a little stumped, like, wait, how does the national news know that we rescued two worms from a sandbox? Steve recognized the two girls for their selfless act, a moment that will stick with them far beyond the second grade. Once I figured out what was going on, I was crying. Are you happy? <laughs> it's not just Steve's visit that makes this a story to be remembered. It's great. It's the meaning behind the motive that students hope will inspire more kindness in the world. That's the hard thing because we all want to, we all want to be recognized and celebrated. But kindness is the kind of thing where you just got to do it because it feels good. Thank you so much. Now that he's already recognized you, do you guys think you're going to still be kind? Yeah. It's not from something very tiny and I think as we move up it's gonna go to something really big. Steve Hartman is in town for another story here in Madison that airs Friday on CBS. Oh, great story, Merrill, making headlines down there. Thank you. Well, right now, a local couple raising awareness about living kidney donation and kidney health by biking more than a thousand miles around Wisconsin and neighboring states. The Oregon Trail is a not-for-profit series of long-distance bike rides created by Mark and Lynn Scotch. The event, a three-week, 1,200-mile-long bike ride. Starting in their hometown in northern Wisconsin, Plover, both Mark and Lynn are donors with this year's ride honoring Lynn's donation journey. Over the past four years, they've logged more than 7,000 miles on Oregon trail rides. The voucher program through the NKR is the only way to go as far as I'm concerned. It also gives the recipient the best match, which keeps them in a situation where they don't have to take as many drugs and their kidney is going to last longer. 
Well, currently, there are nearly 100,000 Americans across the U.S. on the kidney transplant wait list. Around 3,000 more are added every day. 13 people a, die, a day die while waiting for their match. Scattered showers possible later tonight. Then things will clear up a bit. Alex now has our complete forecast. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, Eric, having some quiet time. I'm sure a lot of southern Wisconsin is looking forward to the quiet time that we've been mentioning for a few days now is in the forecast. But we got to get through those showers that Eric was mentioning this evening. There could be a thunderstorm or two. Then we transition to breezy conditions behind all of these weather systems, leading up to a really comfortable weekend. So really nice overall. Our live Platteville Queen Bee Radio Skycam looking a little bit more ominous off towards the north and towards the west, where we have a couple of showers and a couple thunderstorms popping up. Nothing in Dane County, though, right now. These are off towards the west. Again, we can see see those with our sky cam over towards Prairie du Chien west of Fenimore had a couple of lightning bolts here not too long ago. We'll be watching these showers as they move towards the east and these thunderstorms as they move in from the north and from the west this evening. One or two of them could get on the strong side, but talking with meteorologist Blaze Keller, the environment is really dry out there and that may hinder some of the strength of these storms. As we move towards the later evening hours, they're out of here according to Future Track. Storm Prediction Center are those still uh, outlining areas from Madison and points off towards the north and towards the west for an isolated chance for a strong storm. Gusty winds and some hail would be the main threat if one of these two can rev up. So we plan your evening gorgeous right now. That shower chance you might have to dodge if you're outside 8 o'clock or that isolated storm threat even at 10 o'clock as those storms and showers exit the area. Still mild at 10 o'clock at 65 degrees. Let's track the exit of the storms. M Madison points up towards the Dells up towards uh, Green Lake. Marquette counties, that should be the uh, back edge of that shower and thunderstorm activity at 10 o'clock. And as we move towards your Thursday morning, look at this. Clear skies, although we will have breezy conditions coming in out of the west. That's maybe the one not such great thing about the forecast. This is just extraordinary, and I wanted to share it with you. From January 1st to January 5th, 2023, we had five tornado warnings issued during that time frame. When we look at this year, January 1st, and remember our storm season started record-breaking in February, all the way up through June 5th, 2024. So today, we've had 38 tornado warnings issued by the National Weather Service in Milwaukee. It has been a very busy year for southern Wisconsin in severe weather. And here is the good news. As we move out into the 7 to 10 day forecast, temperatures cool as we head towards the weekend, upper 60s to near 70. Probably few complaints there with plenty of sunshine and off and on chance of a storm, but no big all day washouts. The next best chance of rain is Tuesday. And then we start to warm up as we head towards the end of next week with those temperatures moderating a little bit back into the upper 70s to the lower 80s as we head towards the end of next as we head towards the end of next week. But all in all, this whole 10 day forecast, a big improvement, not seeing any alert day conditions anytime soon. And coming up in sports, we're closing in on Friday's first round of the AmFam championship when Steve Stricker and Jerry Kelly are hitting the links. That's next on those three now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Time is running out to call Mad City Baths during big deal days. Our American-made baths and showers are infused with microband for easy cleaning. And in addition to baths, Mad City is also your trusted source for eco sky windows and kitchen cabinet refacing. Last chance to call during this program to take advantage of the savings during big deal days. Save $1,000 on a new bath or shower. Now that's a big deal. Zero down and zero interest till 2026. Senior and military discounts plus a bonus. Receive $750 in safety upgrades with your bath or shower purchase. And remember, this is the last chance during this program for a free $50 Walmart gift gift card with your in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call 608-729-4466. That's 608-729-4466. This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. 
We've been everywhere. We've coded patios, pool decks, basements, hospitals, warehouses, walkways, man caves, churches, schools, airports, hotels, and garages. If it's concrete, TSR will code it. From midnight tweets to drinking bleach to tear gassing citizens and staging a photo op, we knew Trump was out of control when he was president. Then he lost the 2020 election and snapped. Desperately trying to hold on to power, now he's running again, this time threatening to be a dictator, to terminate the Constitution. If I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Trump wants revenge, and he'll stop at nothing to get it. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Here's to the farm and fleet dads, the ones who work hard and get the job done right, the ones who take pride in what they do and take the time to pass it on. This Father's Day, get your dad a gift he'll love. Like men's Ariat t-shirts, buy two, get one free. 3M Digital Work Tunes Hearing Protection, only $49.99. Eight packs of Energizer AA or AAA batteries, $6.99. Plus, a Blaine's gift card makes the perfect Father's Day gift. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. We're just two days away from the AmFam Championship teeing off for the final time at University Ridge and reigning champ Steve Stricker will get his first round going mid-morning. Stricker will tee off on hole one at 10.50 with Ernie Els and Jim Furyk. 11 minutes before that group at 10.39, Jerry Kelly will hit the links as he tries for his third AmFam Championship. Justin Leonard and David Duvall will be golfing with Kelly. Well, Saturday, the Celebrity Foursome will be at University Ridge, but on Sunday, there'll be another big-time athlete in attendance. Jordan Love will make his first appearance as American Family Insurance's new brand ambassador and will engage with fans during the tournament. Love joins Derek Jeter, Christian Yelich, and some others as AmFam ambassadors. Well, speaking of Jordan Love, he's been working on his craft outside of Green Bay's OTAs this offseason. Like last year, the Packers quarterback has been holding throwing sessions with his receivers in California. Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, and Dontavian Wicks have already made the trip out for some reps and routes. Now, when you think of the offense as a whole, it's hard to name a clear number one receiver, but that's quite all right with love. You know, you don't have to have a, a number one receiver. I think it's it works out well when you can spread the ball out and uh, you got different guys making different plays and you can put them in different areas. Um, I think it puts a lot more stress on the defense and, uh, you know, the calls that they can get in. So uh, I think in the long run it helps us in not having a number one guy, a true number one guy, but um, I think all those guys can step up and be the one, um, you know, any given day. Brewers wrapping up their series with the Phillies in Game 3 was a lot like Game 1 and 2. No score in the fifth. Nick Castellanos sends a two-run shot to left. He won it last night and won it again today for Philly. Brew Crew scored just two runs in the series, and they get swept for the first time all year. They fall 2-0 the final. Get out of Philly. Yeah. Go somewhere else. They're too good. Jordan Love just sounds different, doesn't he? More no? confident. Yeah. He knows what he's, he's doing. He's on the cusp of something great, I think. All right, Alex, final check. Last check of weather. Hopefully this is the last of the showers and thunderstorms that we need to track here for a couple of days. Future track being a little aggressive, showing some showers and thunderstorms across the area. This evening, we'll be keeping an eye on those. One or two of those could be on the strong side, but they're out of here. Very similar to these past couple of nights by the time we get into the later part of the evening hours. Then we go to a breezy end of the week, a comfortable weekend. How comfortable? Upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. Take that. Isn't that nice? That is nice. We'll Beautiful. take it, Alex. Thank you. And thanks for joining us at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll be back here tonight for News 3 Now at 10.